Hi, I'm Stephanie Walton, an assistant professor in the accounting department here at LSU, and I'd like to briefly discuss the Coronavirus Aid, Recovery, and Economic Security Act, also called the CARES Act, that was recently passed. Now, the CARES Act has very far-reaching implications, both in the economy, in an accounting setting, and in a tax planning setting as well. Now, this act is estimated to have a $2.2 trillion impact. Now, in terms of tax planning opportunities that this act may have, it can range from anything uh, from accounting method changes to timing differences, timing opportunities, depending on a taxpayer's specific situation. Now, keep in mind that this CARES Act is happening concurrently with a shift in the 2019 tax day. So tax day for 2019 tax returns is now July 15th. So some of these changes are coming at the time when 2019 returns still haven't been filed. Now, this act had implications for individuals and businesses. On the individual side, uh, what's been most talked about is the relief checks. So these are priced at $1,200 per individual and $500 uh, per qualifying child. Now that's qualifying child under the age of 17. And this is subject to phase outs depending on how much income was reported in prior year's returns. But if you get a refund check, it will not be taxable. A little less spoken of, but equally as important in individual provisions of the CARES Act include expansions of the unemployment benefits that are available. It opened up more opportunities here for charitable contributions actually being deducted in future tax returns and also for uh, qualified retirement accounts for individuals you won't have to take a mandatory withdrawal in the year of 2020 and there's more opportunities if you need to take an emergency re uh, withdrawal due to COVID-19 there won't be any early withdrawal penalties. Now on the business side there's a greater use for losses so that includes net operating losses being actually carried back to prior years, uh, the deductibility of other business losses, the deductibility, at least uh, for corporations here, of charitable contributions, and also interest deductions. So it's broadening the basis of what deductions and expenses can actually be claimed. On an employer-employee side, there's special provisions that were put in place due to the fluid situation. This includes, at least for through 2020, postponing the amount of the employer's share of Social Security, which is currently 6.2%. That's being pushed off. In addition, there's a brand new tax credit being created for employee retention. So if operations have actually been suspended for um, a business, especially a small business, and they're keeping uh, employees on payroll, those can be claimed with that refundable credit. And finally, for you know firms that have a retirement account set up, so a defined benefit pension plan for their employees, there are mandatory payments for 2020 to actually fund those accounts will be delayed as well. So all in all, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The actual bill itself of the CARES Act is about 150 pages long. So if there's anything in particular, I highly recommend, you know, go in, dig into some of that literature, uh, and truly see that there's a lot of tax implications and broader economic implications that this act can have.